So AOC is out grandstanding about coronavirus relief again. Now, this bill that's being debated in Congress is basically just an addition onto the heist that took place a couple weeks ago. It's um, more incrementalism and half measures in response to an unprecedented pandemic and economic crisis. I'll do another video where I go more in detail about the substance of the bill. But the headlines are, they're going to set aside a couple billion dollars to add to the pay, the paycheck protection program or the payroll protection program. Even though it's clear that this program is going to need trillions of dollars throughout this pandemic in order to keep small businesses afloat. And the money that Congress is allocating to this program in this next coronavirus relief bill will only fund the program for, I believe it's like two or three days. So wholly inadequate. And there's also provisions in there to fund hospitals to keep healthcare workers on the payroll. So I appreciate the fact that AOC is now taking the correct position, which is I'm not going to co-sign this. I'm not going to be party to this corporate heist. So I'm not voting on this unless there are adequate benefits in this bill that actually help the millions of people in this country who really need it. So that's the correct position, but I don't understand what's changed from now and the last time a coronavirus relief bill was passed through Congress. Because last time she huffed and puffed about it, but she ended up going along with it anyway. Which is what makes me believe that all of this is just theater. AOC is going to come in front of the camera. She's going to say a lot of nice words that progressives like. And she's going to ad, um, advocate for the policies that progressives want. And she'll get a round of applause from the left. And they'll say a bunch of nice things to her on Twitter. Um, lefties in, in new media. They'll do a bunch of videos praising AOC. AOC and other elected progressives like Bernie and Ilhan Omar. It's easy for them to come out and say what the correct policies are. We all know what the correct policies are. All it takes is for you to see somebody say that policy, say, hey, we need to give everybody $2,000 a month throughout this crisis, and say, you know what? I agree with that. Now, I'm going to advocate for that position. That's incredibly easy for a politician to do. The hard part is doing the work, doing the heavy lifting to manifest those, those ideas into actual concrete policies that are passed into law. There are many ways to do this. You can organize protests and... I don't mean protest against one specific corporation to raise their minimum wage or to provide their workers with some benefits. No. Organizing general protests on a mass scale and saying we're going to shut this whole shit down unless Congress gives us what we want. You can also organize protest against specific politicians and the party leadership to pressure them into adopting your, your positions. Or you can have organize thousands and thousands of people to nonstop email, call and text the politicians and their staff just to bombard them to the point where they can't even focus on doing anything else, much less ignore your demands. You can name and shame uh, as a, a elected politician. You have the ability to grab media attention like almost nobody else in the country. If you get in front of a microphone, you get in front of a camera, and you're, uh, 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 you give a, a robust, scorched earth uh, uh, address calling out the leadership of your own party, everybody's going to be paying attention to that. Everybody's going to cover that. And now the ball is in Nancy Pelosi's court. Now she's going to have to publicly make the case why she disagrees with you in the specific case on giving every American a recurring monthly $2,000 payment and the optics of a politician worth over $100 million telling people why she opposes giving families money to support themselves, buy food and, and pay the bills or whatever during an economic crisis. 
will get even more people to your side and apply even more pressure to Nancy Pelosi to do what you want. So there, there are just so many ways that elected progressives can use their power, use the leverage that they have from the movement in order to get the policies that we need done. And time and time again, they've just shown that they, they refuse to do it. They refuse to do it under any circumstances. They have never done not one of those lists of things that I just laid out for you. Not one. Just a couple weeks ago, when you have this giant corporate bailout disguised as a relief package to, to help regular people, when regular people only get crumbs out of that. If at no other time in history, every elected progressive should have been on the same page and should have done all those things that I just listed, but they didn't, they all went along with it. They all voted to pass that, that horrendous bill. They refuse to do it then. They refuse to pressure their own party at any other time. And honestly, we're partly to blame for that because once, and I've noticed this, once we get a progressive elected, we're so desperate to have people in Congress that actually agree with us on policy that once they get there, we're willing to overlook a whole lot of shit just because how much we value someone in there actually advocating for our positions. And there are even a lot of lefties who excuse this kind of weakness and inaction by progressives, and they come up with all these different rationalizations. Oh, it's they don't really have power, and if they really take on leadership like that, if they really go on scorched earth, then they won't get any. Uh, they won't ever be appointed to a chairman position in in five years or ten years, and they'll they'll never actually have power then. So. Until they actually get appointed to a chairman or in leadership, then we're just going to have to bow our heads and go along with whatever the corporate Democrats say. What? That's not why we elected progressives. We didn't elect progressives so that they can potentially maybe in five years or 10 years or 15 years get to be chairman of armed services or get to be chairman of oversight or get to be in leadership positions or speaker of the house. That's not why, that's not the, the point of justice Democrats and the progressive movement primarying corporate Democrats to elect progressives. You were elected to go into Congress and raise hell. And every single time where there's a situation like this, where both parties unite to fuck over the working class, you're supposed to be in there to raise hell, name and shame, provide a better policy alternative, and never lay down, never bend the knee, and go down swinging. That's the, really the reason why they even got elected. I guarantee you, nobody who supported Justice Democrats was doing it so that AOC could be the chairman of a, a committee or be in leadership or be in Speaker of the House in 10 years or 15 years. And another excuse um, from lefties to defend this weakness and this uh, inaction by elected progressives is the, the oh, it's the pressure from with being within the party. It makes it so much harder to actually take on the, the, the party leadership and name and shame and go scorched earth. And yes, that is true, which is also why we've always said, don't it, from the day you step foot there, don't try to negotiate with them. Don't try to befriend them and play nice with them. Don't do that because what inevitably happens with almost every single single uh, prominent progressive who finds themselves inside the belly of the beast, they always get soft and pull punches when it comes to the corporate Democrats because they end up being friends with them. So had they gone into this clear eyed and stuck to their guns and said, look, I'm not trying to be friends with anybody here. I have enough friends back in my in my district, back home where I come from. The only reason why I'm here, the only reason why I even got elected is because all you motherfuckers are corrupt. All you people want to deny people health care. You want to uh, uh, make sure people don't get an increase in their wages. You want to make sure that we, we stay in these wars indefinitely. And I find that those positions abhorrent. So I'm not going to befriend any of you. And every single time I walk into Congress, it's going to be adversarial. It's going to be cantankerous. And you're not going to like me because I'm actually advocating for what your constituents want, which is the exact opposite of what you're doing. So if you went in there and you made friends and now you're unwilling to fulfill your duties, which is to take on the Democratic Party, that's on you. 
So now you're probably asking, how do we combat this weakness and inaction by elected progressives? And my answer, you might be shocked to hear this. I think there should be serious conversation about either primarying these elected progressives, and I'm talking about uh, AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Pramila Jayapal, Ro Khanna, or finding some other way to apply outside left-wing pressure to them. Because the dynamic as it is with the elected progressives in, in Congress, they go there and all the pressure that they're feeling is from the right wing, it's from the centrist, it's from the corporatists, and it's them trying to have them conform to them, them trying to, to make them bend the knee and go the path of least resistance, which is to not threaten the democratic establishment. And like I said, we've seen this every single time a progressive goes into the belly of the beast. They, whether it's uh, um, Howard Dean, Bernie Sanders, AOC, whatever it is, they all soften their rhetoric. They soften their stance on the Democratic Party, whether it's because they want to be friends with them or whether they're afraid of of losing uh, committee assignments and being a pariah in the Democratic Party. All those things are pressuring them to move more in alignment with the Democratic establishment. But what's missing in that equation is any pressure from the actual left wing base. Because like I said, once they get there, we are just so happy that somebody's there finally speaking the truth. Somebody's actually finally advocating for these common sense policies that we kind of coddle them once they're there and go after them with the kids gloves. And so they don't really ever, once they are in Congress, they don't really feel any left wing pressure until it's too late and let, like Elizabeth Warren and you've completely betrayed the, the, the movement. That's the, when they draw the ire of, of lefties in this country. So the solution to this problem, I think, is to have a, a left wing pressure applied constantly. There needs to always be a threat that oh, if we don't do what the progressives want us to do, we might actually lose our seat because they're going to find somebody who will do those things to primary us in the next election cycle. So in that scenario, the the threat of being primaried and losing your seat and losing all your power that you have becomes greater than anything that Nancy Pelosi could do to you. Nancy Pelosi trying to uh, make you a pariah in the Democratic Party or Nancy Pelosi not giving you a committee assignments, whatever it is, or her going out and bad-mouthing you and every member of your party going out and shitting on you at every turn. All of those things seem small, minor, and inconsequential when the choices that they have faced are, do we go after the, the Democratic Party full bore and and uh, retain the support that we have from the, the left-wing progressive movement in this country? Or do we go soft on, on the leadership? Do we not call them out? Do we vote with their disgusting corporate handouts and and uh, kicking the teeth to to workers in this country, and face a, a potential left wing primary challenger who can take my seat and leave me with absolutely nothing? I think that would be the most effective way to get what we actually want to at least be fought for by progressives, because as it stands, just electing progressives isn't enough. You're not electing a fighter. You're not electing uh, somebody who's willing to go to the mat. All you're doing is electing somebody who, in rhetoric, agrees with your policy position and will say that that you're correct, but at the end of the day, won't take any action to make sure that those things happen. So I think AOC is bullshitting with this, her opposition to this bill, clearly, because she won't even uh, acknowledge the how the leadership of her own party is responsible for blocking the policies that she wants to get passed. So this is a bunch of grandstanding in this theater, and she's just looking for a round of applause from the left, as always, And but she's not going to take any real action to get those things implemented, and that's just what it is.